I guess the first thing we'll do, we'll, t we'll talk about the boob armor, right? That that thing has been going on on Twitter. So apparently, from what I understand, uh, this whole spat began because, what, somebody modded some Skyrim armor to be boob armor. Um, and then uh, the Mandalorian episode aired where there was one female Mandalorian and her armor had uh, an area in front for the breasts. Um so I did. I did want to. I did want to talk about this because I've had the boob armor conversation a few times, and my position on it has shifted bit by bit. But let's. There, there's usually two perspectives here, right? One is practicality, uh, that the practicality perspective, and then there's the just why, the the just why perspective. Um, let's go with the practicality perspective first, and then because the, that's when you see a lot of people go, that armor wouldn't actually work. Why? Um, there's two types of boob armor that you see a lot of if, if this is the, the conversation we're really going to have two types of boob armor there's the boob armor where it's just like a chest plate and then there's just like either an an inflated area for the chest right here or it actually has like two rounded cups for the boobs this is easy for me to do because i've got man boobs i need moob armor I, please give me big boy representation with moob armor that's what i want um and the, the on the on the practicality thing, there are people who go, oh well, that that armor wouldn't work. Here's the thing: armor, like classic medieval armor, um, it actually already had a raised plate. It was just usually in the stomach area, and this was because if somebody stabbed, if somebody stabbed at your armor, you didn't want it to be flat, because then with flat armor, it could do this. The armor can can crease down and then there's a likelihood that a that a piercing weapon that has been shoved with enough force might be able to get through the armor and then get into your your under areas or just in general denting that armor like that means that more strikes in that area the strikes will now guide into that weakened area further weakening it so you generally wanted armor to be to be facing out like this so that a strike would be diverted along the sides of the armor so when you look at boob armor, all that is is just that rounded area that was classically where the stomach is just moved up to the chest. So that armor ends up just diverting elsewhere, but it's from the chest area. Now, I forgot there's also the historical thing. Uh, was this a thing that we saw historically? Yes. Uh, we actually saw armor historically that showed all kinds of, uh, of things basically to to accentuate any part that it could of the person wearing it um just like how we've got clothes these days that accentuate parts of our body that same kind of thing happened with armor and it didn't just happen for chests right it wasn't it wasn't a thing that happened as often at least in recorded history for you to have uh female warriors that had uh chest armor well you did have you did have this Pr prepare just prepare for schlong armor. I even I even Google searched it as schlong armor. Now, while this armor may not be the most functional thing for you riding a horse, uh, the fact of the matter is this was to make you look like you were well hung in battle. D literal dick armor. This is dick armor. So, historically, did we have armor? For both, for both sets of accepted sexes at that time, for the most part, uh, that accentuated the parts of the body that weren't necessarily practical. Yes, we did. At dick armor, and you had more inflated boob armor. Now, did we have armor that had like the individual cups? Not really. But if you want to have the practicality conversation, would those individual cups create issues? Still not necessarily, because guess what? Those cups are still raised areas. If a weapon hits, it's still going to divert. And for the area right here in the chest, if you get hit right here, this area is usually made of a... of of The whole thing is made of hardened steel, but the areas that do not have to warp are usually harder and stronger. 
So even a weapon having to hit down to there still would end up just skirting down, diverting down, etc. Not necessarily piercing or breaking there. So on the practicality side, on the on the history side, all that shit. But where do we see boob armor the most? We see it in fantasy, right? Is this is this a thing that's going to get me? So the boob armor conversation seems to be happening a lot because this armor chest plate right here from Mandalorian. Where it's just the raised armor, right? It's just it's just very slightly raised. There's a tiny bit of a curve, but this is not this is not like accentuating too terribly much. This is just pushing out a stereotypical female form. And of course there's a there's a boob armor video from Shadowversity. How neat. Um what we see a lot of in fantasy though is stuff like this. This armor that doesn't protect anything. A weapon's going to skirt down this armor and hit you right in the chest. This is... This, if we're having the practicality conversation, this is not practical. You want to see another character that wears something like this? We're going to look at... Sylvanas Windrunner. Congratulations! You have an armor kini, but your, your stomach is still exposed. You're going to get... You're going to get completely and totally gutted. But here's the thing. When we're having the argument about practicality, people like to take the practicality argument and move it into the realm of fantasy. Here's the thing. Is it inconceivable in the realm of fantasy where people can conjure bolts of frost out of nowhere, conjure material items, is it not acceptable to just accept that this is a fantasy realm where our rules don't apply, nor do they have to. This is where we get into the the more sexist part of the conversation, the, the argument on sexism. Well, why we accept that this armor, the idea of it being practical doesn't matter because it's in a fantasy world. It is almost always presented in some kind of fantasy world where the hang-ups of the armor, whether it has exposed chest, not exposed chest, however much skin it's showing, the hang-ups of it are not necessarily seen within narrative, right? That generally doesn't happen. So then we have to ask the question, why would you have armor like this? Well, of course you're doing it to accentuate a form of a character. If we look at Sylvanas, it's obviously being used to accentuate her female figure. Now, is this a bad thing? Yes and no. And here's why. Yes, because this is objectification, right? This is looking at a character like Sylvanas, who is as poorly written as she is right now. She is very much objectified, right? This is there is there is no arguing that Sylvanas is not being objectified in something like this with the armor thong, right? Like, obviously, she's gotten more armor as the game has continued, but she's she's definitely being objectified, and this is definitely not a positive thing by itself. What could possibly make it okay, though? Aside from the fact that if an artist just wants to draw a character like this, they can. If an artist wants to draw a character to be sexy, who cares? That don't don't try to have the argument a, a, a character shouldn't draw or a character shouldn't be drawn in a sexy way by an artist that let the artist draw the art the way they want to draw it period don't police their fucking art i've seen enough of that from the steven universe community but in something like if we're talking about sylvanas we're not just talking about fan art like something like this is obviously fan art this is deviant art somebody wants to draw this like this fine who cares but when we look at sylvanas officially we look at her older her older stuff I don't think this one is actually official, but this is still the stuff she was wearing during the burning of Teldrassil. If you look at stuff like this, what could make something like this okay? And my argument is that if you're going to use armor to sexualize a character, sexualize all genders. Either do it for all or do it for none. Now, granted, if we're talking an MMORPG like World of Warcraft, you've got the ability to pick up armor that is more... I, the, the the term they use in WoW is slut mogging, uh, where you, you get armor that's supposed to look more sexualized, and so, ergo, slutty. I don't like using that term, though, because slut shaming. Um, and then you just make a character look sexy instead of looking practical. Um, 
if you are going to have those options in a game, and there's nothing wrong with having those options in and of themselves, the best way to make that function is to have that idea for your male characters as well. If I can make a, a warrior look like just almost a bare-chested barbarian with just shoulder pads, boob plate, and a thong, and just dual-wielding two giant axes, if that's the fantasy character I want to make in a game, fine, but give me the ability to make that kind of character, but male too. Give me male thongs in the game. Give me the ability to have chess piece chess pieces that just don't show on the character or cover almost nothing. Like even jokingly, just have like like two strips of metal that just cover man nipples for no reason. Do stuff like that. If you're if you're gonna objectify characters, objectify all of them. Allow all of them to be like this. If you're only going to do it for the female characters, then it's easy for people like me to pick apart and just go. Hey, you know, you're actually kind of focusing on just the female form. This is a little bit sexist. You're objectifying just the females, but when you look at the males, all you're giving them is like a male power fantasy. All you're giving them is just big hulking man right here with big armor, big shoulder pads. Of course, if it's in a Blizzard game, it's always going to have big shoulder pads. There's no, no way around that in Blizzard games. But if you're going to have boob armor, sexy boob armor, then please also have armor that allows you to do that for males as well. Now, I don't remember where I chucked this, but there was a conversation that was happening on Twitter about the boob armor thing specifically, and I commented on it, and... And I'm trying to find it because I want to bring up the picture... I want to bring up the picture of it because it was it was posted by Legend of Phoenix. Hold on. And I really liked this example. I'm just trying to find it. I, I I'm not gonna find it. I'm not gonna find it. But basically, it showed a um it showed like sorcerer armor from uh, I can't, I don't remember what game it was, um but the armor was like hypersexualized on the woman and it just kind of like went down the curves like this and it like it wasn't bad looking but of course that was kind of the point but then when you looked at the male's armor it was the same thing except it was accentuating parts of the male form so instead of trying to like avoid the nipples it was around the chest showing the pecs and just kind of sensually going down it looked like something you would have seen from jojo's bizarre adventure JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is probably a great example of this. Men who, when they walk around, they just exuberate sexual energy. <laughs> the straightest person in the world can still feel the sexual energy of the average male JoJo character. All of them. And there's no... There's no issue with that. If you're, it, Especially if you're going to have... Armor that accentuates your female form. Please have armor that accentuates a classically male form as well in your games. You don't have to get rid of all the sexy armor. You can still have that. Let your artist go wild with that. But just accept that to do that, you should also have the ability to make that kind of armor, but also for your males. If somebody, if, if the only people in your game who are going to be able to see that nice-looking, sexy armor, or people who are attracted to females, then congratulations, you've got lesbians, you've got uh, cis males, and you've got people who are autogynef uh, autogynephiles, like people who are attracted to females specifically, and they're the only per people you're going to be catering to, then, yeah, your, your characters are basically being objects, and you're only catering to one crowd. You're selling only female objects. But if you do it for both and allow that to be a thing where anybody can just have their character sexualized if they want to, great. The problem's averted. Another thing that helps as well, truthfully, honestly, transmogging. If you've got a game that has, like, super powerful armor, uh, but it looks like a freaking skimpy schoolgirl uniform, 
then allow people to transmog that armor. So if there's somebody who wants to run around looking like a skimpy schoolgirl, fine, they can do that. But if there's somebody who wants the bonuses of that armor, but they don't really, they're not really comfortable running around like that, that's not a thing they want to do in their video game, let them transmog. Let them just remove that armor. Transmog just means that the armor that's being shown to the people uh, when you're playing is not the same armor that you're wearing underneath. You can put whatever armor look you have on the outside and then wear whatever junk you want on the inside. Wear the armor you want for the stats and then show uh, something that doesn't look like a clown suit on the outside. Um... So yeah, that's 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 my take on the boob armor thing. Historically, we did have some variants of it. Um, armor, historically, also was used in many cases to just show parts, sexualized positive aspects, magnify those in the people who were wearing them. So historically, yeah, there is some precedent for this, uh, though it certainly happened more with males. Uh, practicality only exists as an argument within universes where that practicality can actually be felt. And usually that doesn't happen so much in fantasy universes where we see this more often, especially if you've got like a mage who's going to fight at long distance. It doesn't matter if their robe covers, uh, covers their tits or only covers their belly button. They're still wearing cloth armor unless they're out in the cold. This isn't really going to, going to do much for your practicality conversation. Um, but the practicality conversation doesn't matter so much if we're talking about fantasy worlds because in fantasy worlds we're dealing with fantasy mechanics characters might not ever get cold characters might not actually ever deal with a situation where a blade is going to pierce their their stomach because they happen to have an exposed midriff but if you're going to sexualize your characters in your fantasy world please sexualize all of them don't just sexualize your female characters while i may be a straight cis male and my ability to see a sexy female character in a game is nice for, to me I can't just argue from my perspective. I would like other people who want to see the same thing but are not attracted to female forms to see that shown elsewhere, to see people who can do sexy transmogs of their character if they happen to be using a male character. Throw it everywhere. You're going to you're you're going to oversexualize, you want to do that. I'm not going to tell your artist what to do. They don't have to stop doing that. But please do it everywhere please do it to everyone because if you're not willing to do it to everyone then you're just kind of being misogynistic at least if we're talking about uh boob armor so anyway that's my take on the boob armor thing there that's the conversation you guys don't don't agree that's fine fight about it in the comments section mm -hmm.